could you tell me if you understand the difference between thought and awareness? And we're always confusing the two. And let me say something else too. That all the questions, all the spiritual questions that we hear, all of them, are a misunderstanding of the difference between thought and awareness. All of them. So whenever you come up with a question, which is great if you ask it, is always leading you back to know the difference between thought and awareness. Once you know the difference, you also realize that they complement each other. <clears throat> now you might say, how can a op total opposite complement each other? Just like black and white, just like male and female, just like two sides of the same coin, head and tails. They're totally opposite, but they're yet one coin, okay? So thought and awareness are one. <clears throat> but it is the confusion between the two that makes us misunderstand and suffer needlessly. Okay, so um, can somebody tell me, what, what, how do you, yeah? Um, for me, the thought would be the extension from awareness. Okay. It, you, you have to start from something, and I would think that awareness would be the start, and the expression of awareness is going through thought, which then creates the matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in order for us to think, there has to be awareness. Yes. Yeah, right. It's not possible to think without awareness. Exactly. Because you see what happens when a thought comes into you, which is of course is happening to about 25,000 a day, according to Deepak Chopra, or 26,000, give or take a few. <laughs> uh, you, we, you make these thoughts, we make these thoughts, not a thought, we make it reality. And so, the moment you believe a thought, it becomes a feeling, you see? Incidentally, that's what emotional feeling is. It's making a thought real without realizing it's a thought. And so, the moment you make it real, immediately, the body responds to that. Because the power of belief is so immense that your whole structure, your whole body, everything about you, your whole mind-body connection is made up of belief, you see? Uh, um, Byron Katie said something so interesting, mind-boggling. You know, um, she she was talking about cancer, and uh, she said, she said cancer, we we learn about it and we believe in it. First, we believe that we have cancer, and the doctor tells us that it's very serious, and so we believe it. And the moment you believe it, then you go about trying to get rid of it, not realizing that everything that happens to you was first a belief in it. And that's what brought its reality. You see? Everything that we experience in life, it is because somebody or someone has told us about it. And then it became real. You see? But do you know that nothing is real? except the knowing of who you are. But, but the moment you begin to think that you are a material form, subject to everything, then you begin to suffer automatically from your belief structure. You see? And so the belief structure makes up the world that you experience. How you see the world is exactly what you believe. Now you might say, is belief wrong? There's no wrong or right. But, the point is to know, and knowing is far superior to belief. In fact, they're, they're not even in, in, in working relationship, you see? A belief is the very nature of the human being. It's, it happens naturally. We believe everything. But what is important is knowing in the heart beyond the shadow of a doubt. Most of the time, people who read spiritual literature, they say, Oh, I know who I am. I am spirit. I am divine. I am this. And then they wonder why they're living life and missing something. Okay? Because they believe in it. But they don't know it to be so. They don't know it that this is real. This is all that matters. This is what life is really about. It's, it's about this. That you are this I am. You see? 
And so the difference between belief and knowing is vast, in the same way that, that thought and awareness is vast. Because awareness is also knowing. You see? And thought becomes a belief. So it is the same difference. But we, 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 we join them together. You see? We put them together. And that's what's create that feeling as if something is missing. Because as long as you are working from the belief point of view, or from the thought point of view, thinking about it, you see, you begin to think you know. And when you know something, there is no doubt. There is absolutely no doubt. You won't even ask a question about it when you know. For example, you, you know you're a woman. Do you have a doubt about that? No, of course not. You see, that's called knowing. You know you exist. You see? That's knowing. It is consciousness recognizing itself. But belief can be shaken. Belief can be wavered. You see? Okay. So, that, that was good. So, so, therefore, it is through awareness that we can have thought. Is thought possible without awareness? 